Hello, friends, and welcome to a new episode of Readings That Heal with me, Marissa of Marissa Moments, where I'm sharing divine words for the day, real life stories, and channeled messages that aim to trigger a spark of your divinity, awaken your spirit, and connect you back to your true self. Now, be warned, this is about divine accountability and self reflection. So, if you're here, it's because you're ready to work and heal. Now, let's get into it. All right, y'all, you ready for this one? I know my energy is way up from that intro, but I, I feel something moving in my spirit and I need to share this with you. The word for this podcast is guilt, guilt. Now let's talk about it because God, Gaia, ancestors, angels, and saints are really working something through me right now. Now here's the thing. Here's the divinity, if you will. Guilt is the best, <laughs> best used weapon of the enemy. Let's replay that a little bit. Guilt is the best used weapon of the enemy. It is constantly used on all of us, present company included. Like, listen, I am no exception to any of these rules. The reason I can share with you is because of my experience with it, right? Now, let's get back to the word is guilt. Guilt, guilt, guilt. Let's say it as many times as we need to because guilt will prevent you from making a phone call. Guilt will let you stay seated in a place that you have long outgrown. Guilt will make you question yourself over and over again, even though you are doing the air quotes right thing. Guilt will keep you in a relationship that is abusive. And and this is real, uh, whether it be romantic, whether it be friendship, whether it be regardless of what the, the content is, it can keep you in a partnership. Let's talk about a business partnership. It can keep you forming something with a, a old friend that is no longer suitable or in alignment with where you're supposed to be going in, in, in relation to your actual purpose, right? Just because you feel some type of way, you're holding on to that guilt, now, here's the thing, right? Now, I'm not trying to be sacrilege or anything like that or blasphemous or anything like that. I got to put the disclaimer out first, right? But you know what God said? Now, I, I don't know for sure, but it, I, it was in a good book. He said, bring all that guilt nonsense to me and just leave it. Just leave it and then walk away. And then he was like, listen, I gave my only son for you guys. So that way you wouldn't even have to carry all that guilt or any of the sins that you did. Just give it up. Give it up. But meanwhile, the enemy is like, yeah, you should feel guilty about that. Why didn't you call them? Why didn't you do that? You should have. You should have, could have, would have. The enemy will whisper you some shoulda, coulda, woulda's all day long. You know, so many people out here that are hanging on to guilt for years. There's even others who their own, their entire life is based in guilt right? Any other way just looks foreign. They're just like, what is that? Happiness? What is that? Freedom? Foreign to me? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm going to be over here with my guilt. That is a tool of the enemy. And yet, and still so many of us allow it to take a, a hold on of us. The vision that I received when I was standing in the shower before I was like, try, hurry up, trying to dry off so I could record this was a choke hold. Guilt will have you in a choke hold. You will not be able, able to speak. How about, let's talk about that throat chakra, right? The color blue. Have you been seeing the color blue a lot lately? Have you been uh, drawn to it? Maybe because you've been suppressed. Your voice has been suppressed and from uh, tra traumatic training. That's a lot of tea, so I got tripped up on it, right? Maybe in the past, you've been hushed. And so whenever you did speak, you started to question yourself and you started to allow guilt to sit into your system. So now you're quiet. Now you don't speak up even when you know you should. Right? That's guilt. Guilt will dictate your entire life, your entire existence if you allow it to. And what God, Gaia, ancestors, angels, and saints, and as a side note, the reason I say all of those things is not to negate anything or anyone, is to let you hopefully understand that that's just semantics when it comes down to it. The ultimate source is the ultimate source. It's not, it would arose by any other name smell as sweet. I'ma just leave that there, right? Because if you know, you know. Romeo and Juliet, shout out. <laughs> but anyway, guilt we're talking about guilt here, people. What guilt are you carrying? And even more so than that, what spirit just brought to my heart is some of us are carrying the guilt of our ancestors. How about that? 
We all know about the notion of breaking generational chains, right? Getting away from generational trauma and all those types of things. However, many of us are holding on to the guilt of our ancestors, whether it be your mother and father, whether it be their mother and father. At what point do we choose to say, I will no longer carry this cross? Because somebody else carried the cross for me. Now I can put this one down. Because guess what? We will never be him. Mm, Did you get that? We will never be him. We can try to be like him. That's kind of the point, right? We can recognize what he did for us in order for us to get here, right? And that's the reason why we don't need to carry on to that, hold on to that guilt. So that way we can continue to move forward and we can live and we can learn. All of our experiences are a singular step to get us to the next step. But if we allow that cross of guilt to be put onto our backs by the enemy, then guess what? You're not going to get very far. Now, I'm just going to be straight up with you because you're going to compare every single thing to what you could have, would have, should have done in the past, even though it's a whole new scenario. Oftentimes, God, Gaia, ancestors, angels and saints will put us in that same predicament or what we perceive to be a predicament just to see if we're going to still apply that same old rusty, dusty guilt to the new situation. Are we going to allow that old rusty, dusty guilt to negate our opportunities to prevent us from moving forward? What are we going to do with it? Are we going to allow that old rusty, dusty guilt to dictate our lives? At what point will we say enough is enough? Leave it to the side, learn from it, and move on. Because if we keep (laughs) ourselves tethered to that whole notion of guilt, that rusty, dusty guilt, then we will never be able to truly, effectively, and efficiently move ahead. And if you're listening to me, then your goal is to move ahead. You are working on your healing. You are breaking those generational curses. You are highlighting the things that other people refuse to acknowledge. That's not because you are supposed to be sitting in a seat of guilt. It's because you are supposed to move ahead. You have been chosen. You are here for a reason. And that reason is not to carry some rusty, dusty guilt. And I'm going to leave you with that because hopefully you are picking up what I'm putting down. Oh, and the application before I go, because you know, I'm not just going to put out a good word and not allow you to have some application because we need to process on these words, right? We need to think about it. We need to apply it. And then we need to advance forward with this new knowledge. So the the homework assignment that I give you on this, (laughs) and you could use a different word if that one triggers you, is think about it. What guilt are you holding on to that you need to just go ahead and release? Now, it doesn't matter what that release looks like for you. It may look different for different people. It may mean having a conversation. It may mean forcing yourself to do that thing that you keep preventing yourself from because of guilt, whether it be make a phone call, whether it be visit an old restaurant, right? Whether it be talking to a relative, whether it be Visiting a store, opening a business, departing from a partnership. Now, I'm not going to tell you to leave a relationship, right? Let's let's use common sense. We can't use everything as an excuse talking about. Marissa said, I have guilt in this relationship, so I got to go. No, come on. Let's use common sense. We have to use our discernment. We can't use these things as an excuse to take action that we're probably going to regret in the end, right? But... Using that discernment, using your your intuition, using your divine guidance, all of those different types of things, discern what that guilt is, that true guilt, that rusty, dusty guilt, and then process how you need to approach it. Whether it means just set it down and walk away, goodbye, that's fine. Or if it means that you need to break it down and understand more. Or if it means maybe you need to talk to someone, maybe go see a therapist or someone else, talk to a friend, talk to me, talk to anybody. So that way you can process how you can break apart that guilt and no longer feel it or no longer hold on to it. But you have to be truly ready, willing and able because I could say, yeah, I want to let go of this guilt and have a conversation with a friend and then have that same thing come up next week because, yeah, no, I'm not letting it go, really. 
Is that you? I don't know. I'm just saying what's coming to my mind and what's coming to my heart. (laughs) So the action is process and discern where you are holding on to guilt at in your life, in your current existence, and then address it in a real tangible way. Break it down mentally. Maybe have a conversation about it in a healthy, positive way. If you know somebody isn't ready, willing, and able to have that conversation, then maybe don't do it because it's just going to reinforce that notion, right? We have to carry uh, common sense with us on this spiritual journey. Anyway, I feel like I'm talking in circles. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down because listen, it's time to let go of the guilt. Assess where it is, establish it, and then maybe dissect it out. And that's it. Oh, and give it to Jesus. That's it. (laughs) And as always, when this message resonates, that means it is for you. And maybe it resonates for a friend of yours. And if that's the case, send it to them. Again, use that common sense though. If you know somebody's going to be offended by you sending this to them, maybe don't. Maybe don't, because then they're going to be like, oh, I don't like Marissa. And I don't want them to think that. Anyway, (laughs) as always, don't forget to look me up on social media. Honestly, I'm not as active as I used to be, but definitely find me on YouTube because all of my videos, all of my moments, all of my downloads and readings are definitely there. This might be where you're even listening to me right now. But when you look me up, just remember, it is Marissa Moments. And that is Marissa with one S, because like I always like to say, there is only one me. So until next time, happy healing, peace, love, and soul.